Well, welcome everybody to Science Center of Excellence. You are at the moment in the premises of TMS, which spells for Thinker Makerspace, a digital fabrication and rapid prototyping workshop that is housed here in uh, in Science and uh, is sponsored by the European Structural Innovation Funds. Uh, the workshop that you're going to receive today is under the umbrella also of DIGIN and the Innovative Entrepreneurship from uh, the North. So hopefully you will get information that is basically designed to be the basic information for a designer uh, to have uh, in mind for their uh, visual uh, promotion, understanding, Marketing, let's say. Branding. Branding. Yeah. So uh, since uh, we brought these beautiful people to explain everything to you and uh, to pass on their information, I pass the mic to Omiros Panaidis. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this uh, small workshop we're going to do today. Uh, uh, thank you to Makerspace and the team uh, behind, it, behind this. Uh, so together with Omar Spagiris and today with Philippos Vasiliadis, we're going to make a small uh, introduction to the basics of visual communication uh, and branding. Uh, I'm going to uh, start with a presentation on visual communication. Uh, Philippos will continue uh, one with branding. And for the last hour, maybe and a half, we're going to continue with a small uh, workshop on how to build uh, a brief uh, for a visual communication uh, project. Uh, so, uh, the first presentation, it's titled Visual Communication, Building Narratives, Aesthetics, and Locality. Uh, I'm a graphic designer and an academic. I work at the Cyprus University of Technology, uh, where I teach graphic design, uh, book design, and, uh, and typography. Uh, so, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk uh, about visual communication uh, in general. So um, some things that I, uh, some words that I link to visual communication. So to what is uh, visual communication? And it's the first thing I have in my mind always is uh, storytelling. So visual communication uh, has to do with uh, a story, uh, the building uh, of a narrative. Uh, visual communication is about uh, building a message or using uh, language, signs, signals, stimulus, and cues to uh, create uh, a message. And it's very important to understand that there's always uh, a sender and a receiver, someone who sends uh, the message, and a group that uh, receives uh, that message, our target uh, group, as we uh, call them. Uh, it's very important that visual communication is about creating meanings. Uh, creating meanings uh, throughout uh, the message that we want to uh, pass out. Uh, it's about uh, the experience uh, one gets or the audience gets, uh, the audience uh, gets uh, when looking at a visual communication project uh, or a branding uh, project. Uh, visual communication is about uh, creating context, uh, content, uh, how, to, how, how we interpret, in, interpret it, that information. Uh, and in our times, uh, we can see a lot of misinformation, uh, fake news happening through visual communication because uh, of, of the rise of AI technology and the tools are now uh, more easily uh, accessible by anyone. So our mobiles can create a fake image, a fake visual that can create a fake image. If we, and if we take that word fake and put it in, we have a fake storytelling, a fake message, fake language, fake signs, and uh, et cetera. Uh, yeah. uh, it's about uh, the mediums we use in visual communication, uh, meaning uh, what kind of mediums we use to uh, create that. It's, uh, or, or, or uh, let's say it's um, uh, digital uh, mediums, print-based uh, mediums, or it's uh, we are using uh, graph design, illustration, animation, and I'm going to talk more about that uh, later. Uh, it's about the semiotics, and when we talk about semiotics, it's a big discipline. It's about uh, the meaning of symbols, what uh, the symbols mean, what an image mean, what the color mean, and uh, what we, what they mean uh, in relation uh, to uh, one each other. 
uh, visual communication is also about uh, composition, a uh, technical building up uh, the image, uh, using uh, design tools to create uh, your meaning, and building hierarchy of information, uh, what I want our, my reader uh, to read first, what second, and find hierarchy between uh, the information. It's about aesthetics, visual culture, visual arts. It's about the myths uh, with build, uh, we build uh, through a story. It's about the style we use, uh, text, uh, and image. Uh, I'm gonna start with a very simple uh, example. I'm gonna take the cross uh, symbol uh, that has uh, different meanings uh, uh, in relation to what context uh, we put that, uh, that cross. Uh, if, if I put, let's say, numbers uh, next to it, it's a mathematical symbol, a plus sign. Uh, if I rotate uh, a bit uh, that symbol, uh, again, in mathematics, uh, uh, it's multiply, it's mat I multiply something, uh, I can use that uh, symbol, um, let's say, to vote, because it's an acceptable symbol for voting. If I read uh, Latin numbers, it's the number 10. So depending on of how I used a symbol or an image, it changes uh, the meaning and the visual communication uh, behind it. If I move the lines a bit, I get a religious symbol, uh, Christianity uh, and Jesus. And if I turn it upside down, I go to the uh, devil, Satanism, and all of the uh, meanings that come behind the same uh, symbol of the cross. If I flip it a bit, I get that Scandinavian uh, flags. So the same symbol, uh, different uh, sites, a different uh, meaning uh, altogether. If I put in a circle, one can say it's a Celtic uh, cross or maybe a fascist cross, depending again how it's used and uh, which groups are using uh, that same uh, symbol. Uh, if I put arrows on it, uh, it's changing the meaning. I can use it, uh, let's say, for, uh, for mapping, for navigation, uh, for routes. Uh, so I, I, I'm changing uh, the narrative by altering uh, my, my basic uh, symbol. Also, color is very important. I can just uh, uh, make it green. And now I'm starting to get uh, different meanings. That is a green uh, cross on the back. Now I'm seeing it. So something about health, something about the pharmacy. And if I put that cross uh, on a building, <coughs> I get a pharmacy. That's, uh, this one is in Lodge, I think. Uh, so I guess so I have a different uh, interpretation of the same symbol and different uh, signs. I can play a bit more, so I can take a part of the of the cross and create like a heart, at least this cheesy uh, heart uh, symbol next to the cross. So I have uh, good health, uh, the, the pharmacy together. So I'm creating a different narrative, a different territory. This is all from Cyprus, uh, the images. You see? Uh, more extravaganza uh, use of, uh, of the cross to the sides, uh, more languages. Uh, so it's starting to make a, a statement as a cross in, a, in the white uh, background. Or like this big structure of a cross uh, for, for, for the pharmacy and the a little lead cross on the side uh, to display more messages and meanings. And again, we're building on the cross uh, symbol uh, we started. And this is the last one uh, from the pharmacy uh, sequence. And this one is very nice because it's next, to, uh, it's next to a sex shop, but the advertisements on the pharmacy are pink. The sign on the sex shop is pink. So everything blends together. So color blends everything together. So I have this weird sex shop pharmacy thing. So I'm not sure what, what, what side I'm looking at. And, uh, and there is also this big structure of cross on the side of, of, of the pharmacy that it's very weird, but yeah, it's making, you can see it from a distant, uh, distance. This one is in uh, Limassol, Yasudoro. Uh, yeah, that's the end of the cross uh, example. And uh, when we're talking about visual communication, we have to talk also about uh, some other forms of communication, that's verbal communication and non-verbal uh, communication. And I'm gonna build on uh, by showing uh, a cropped image and I'm gonna uh, try and, and create uh, a bit of a story. I'm gonna show different parts of the same image and uh, talk about uh, these three types of uh, communication. So the first thing uh, we saw, it's a black and white. Uh, image. So the 
first thing we, we, we have a little bit nostalgia, melancholic uh, uh, feeling. Uh, we see a crowd. Uh, we see cameras pointing at us. Uh, it's a little bit pixelated, uh, the image. It looks a bit old. So we're starting to create uh, a story behind uh, that image we have uh, in front of us. Now, I I'm shifting uh, the part of the image a bit. I'm seeing part of the crowd again on a, on a balcony in a veranda. And I'm starting seeing also a poster on the wall. Uh, how many of you um, recognize that poster? Yeah, yeah, okay. that's, yeah, that's Magarios. And because uh, in visual communication and branding, uh, one powerful thing we have is repetition. So if we see something many times, it's embedded in our minds. So it doesn't have to be the whole image, just part of an image. It's enough to make us understand what we are looking at. So that's a poster of Magarios in the back. So we're starting to create uh, uh, the story, filling up the gaps. So how her crowd, how a poster of Magarios, so, yeah, we are in a public speech uh, by Magario situation now. So we're seeing uh, more crowd, uh, the balconies are full, people are climbing on the, on the roof. So it, it's packed, everything is packed. Uh, more posters of Magarios. Uh, there is also one more poster on, on the top of the, on the balcony. That's not something we can recognize if we don't know it because it's not something we, uh, we saw many times. So I'm not sure uh, what that poster is about. So you have to know that thing. But Magari was so embedded in our minds of that posture uh, he has. So in visual communication, it's very easy to create something by, re by repetition. So, uh, and going back to the types of communication, we have also verbal communication. Verbal, verbal communication is communication through spoken or written uh, language, meaning uh, now I'm using verbal communication uh, to talk to you, you can use, uh, uh, with a small group, one-on-one, one, one, in a crowd. This is a public speech. Uh, he's using verbal communication to communicate uh, with a crowd. He's also using non-verbal communication. This is another part uh, of the image. We're seeing uh, the hand, just the hand of uh, Magarios waving uh, at the crowd. Now we see the full-blown uh, crowd uh, on the street. Uh, everything is packed, the roofs, and we have the, just the hand uh, of Magarios waving uh, at the people. So nonverbal communication, it's communication com communicated without language. That means facial expression, hand gestures, body gestures. I'm using also uh, hand uh, nonverbal communication now as I speak uh, to you by moving my hands left and right and, I don't know, pointing things. Um, and that's the whole image uh, on the bottom right. So we started uh, from the small uh, camera uh, on the top left, we moved up on the back of Magarios and then on the hand. If, if we started with this, the whole point would be just uh, Magarios and then everything else. So, so as I told before, hierarchy, how we uh, position uh, the visuals, changes the story, the storyline and, uh, and the narrative uh, of the image. Uh, Bruno Munari uh, did also a nice uh, study on uh, nonverbal communication. That is a, a book he did in 1958 about uh, the Italians, how they use their hands and how they communicate. Um, also in Cyprus, you have some uh, hand gesture, let's say, I don't know, I don't know if I do this to someone, let's say that, that he, he, he did something stupid. If I do it with both hands, it's more stupid. I mean, until I double the stupidity level, something like that. And yeah, and the third part is the visual communication. That's the main uh, attribute of today's talk. And it's communicating messages in visual aids, elements, and textual uh, content. That meaning images, photographs, illustrations, graphics, typography, and, uh, and color. So on the screen, we have a lithograph of uh, a poster for the Forest Park uh, Hotel at, at Platres. It's, uh, it's from 1930s. And we were seeing uh, the elements, the hotel in the back, uh, the flat colors, a more modernist look uh, on, the, uh, on the coloring. And there is also uh, the mufflon that make it more local. It localizes uh, the meaning by using uh, a wild animal, like the mufflon uh, in a silhouette in the front to communicate that this is happening uh, in Cyprus and make it more localized for the people that are viewing uh, the poster. So in visual communication, we can use graphic design, 
uh, web design, multimedia, uh, UI, UX, uh, illustration, animation, film, photography, advertising, etc., etc., and other disciplines. Uh, we're using different mediums, printed matter mediums, pixel-based medium. The form can change from physical, virtual, augmented uh, reality, can uh, act as a visual communication, and, and can serve any purpose can be commercial, educational, cultural, political, uh, and so uh, on. Uh, on top, on the top left, it's the logo of the, the, the coat of arms of the Republic of Cyprus. We have the, the dove and the branch with the olives. We have the orange color uh, that traces back to the Cobra of Cyprus. We have the, the branches. We have the dove that symbolized freedom that was there uh, after uh, the English uh, uh, from Cyprus. And on the right, we have the coat of arms that they're using in north uh, part of uh, Cyprus that again is using uh, a dove uh, and an olive branch, different colors, different um, branch uh, underneath. And we also have the addition of the crescent and star uh, on top of the coat of arms. And did the same with the Cyprus police to see just the difference of the two uh, um, uh, symbols. On, on, the, on the bottom left, we have the, the code of arms embedded in the Cyprus police uh, logo with a different kind of graphic uh, approach uh, and a ribbon um, beneath. And on the right, we see uh, the logo from the north uh, side uh, the police are using. And we can see the elements uh, from the color forms that are repetitive uh, at the bottom one. And now the dove is missing uh, from that uh, image. Uh, also, a very famous uh, piece of graffiti that will be found in the walls of uh, Nicosia, Tukulina Pedase, the bird flu. Again, using the same uh, color forms, have a different uh, message, a different uh, story. Uh, now the hope. It's, it's, it's ended, there is no hope uh, now because uh, the hope with the, 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 the bird with the, with the olive branch uh, left uh, uh, the shield. Uh, now, I'm, I'm going to continue with uh, another, uh, again another logo uh, from uh, uh, 12 years ago from the Occupy the Buffer Zone uh, movement. And there is a nice build and storyline story behind uh, this. Uh, this logo. This is not the logo because they are, they are using this symbol inside their logo. So, uh, quick history. Uh, Arab Spring, uh, 2010, starting in Tunisia, uprising against our governments, follow uh, in Egypt, and so on uh, in the Arab uh, countries. This uh, went to uh, New York and Canada. So, the ad pastors did this uh, poster uh, uh, after as, as a response to the Arab Spring uh, uh, Revolution and created this poster uh, 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 to people gather at uh, Wall Street to occupy uh, Wall Street, bring a tent with them, so occupy and stay there at, the, at Wall Street. There's a ballerina dancing on top of the Raging Bull. The Raging Bull is part of the economic uh, strict, the financial strict, uh, financial, financial? Uh, district. district of uh, in New York. And you have the protest on the back. And the color, it's very important, black, uh, white, and red. And uh, from this, uh, we have the, the logotype of the Occupy the Buffer Zone movement. It was uh, a movement, a uh, collective movement, uh, from uh, south and north of uh, uh, Nicosia, people gathering at the buffer zone and occupying the buffer zone uh, with uh, the meaning uh, to create uh, a united uh, Cyprus. So we have the, the color um, reflection for the poster, black and white and red. Uh, it was in Nicosia, so they took uh, the emblem of Nicosia, the Venetian walls, they took out the dove and put the uprising uh, arrow uh, um, that also symbolizes the division and going forward. Uh, also, I'm not sure if that was the, uh, the idea, but if we take the, 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 the question on the poster, what is our one demand? There is uh, one Cyprus uh, as, a, as an answer, and they're also using the, the no bullshit 
uh, statement. And we have also the raging bull that was on the poster. I'm not sure if that was intentional or not, but we can make these uh, connections uh, if we want to. So we have that uh, log and that story behind, uh, behind it. And then we have this interpretation of the logo and how it was used where with uh, spraying and graffiti in Nicosia. So the simplification also is very, is very important, someone to uh, repeat and simplify uh, the visual. So we have just a circle now with the uprising arrow, LBZ, we have also the acronym uh, of the movement, uh, leaves. Uh, we are using manholes on the second top as a circle. And again, uh, up, the uprising uh, arrow, we have the, the stencil one, and also we have a new symbol that they are, they are changing their logo, putting inside the female and male uh, symbol to create this queer justice uh, statement. So all of this coming uh, from a, a collective movement started uh, in Nicosia in 2011. It lasted for six uh, months. There was, there was a great documentary uh, on YouTube if you want to watch more uh, about that. Occupy Buffer Zone documentary is from some Polish guys that were part uh, of the movement uh, in uh, Cyprus. Now, the next, <laughs> the next example, it's from a cult uh, a Cypriot movie, uh, Cyprus Ninja, or is a Samurai. I'm gonna show a clip, and then I'm gonna talk a bit more about it. Okay, so yeah, this is a part, of a, it's a clip from uh, Chorona Samurai, also on YouTube, you can watch it for, it's there also, yeah. And I, I just put four images from that uh, uh, film, that we can start to get some visual cues from a uh, locality in Cyprus. Uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to talk about what is a ninja working in a cafe net. I'm gonna pass that. So we have the water tank, that's part of every Cypriot roof. Now it's not, uh, it's, it's more rounded, more plastic ones, but um, the, most of the roofs in have this, uh, uh, this deposit of the water tank. So it's part of our visual culture and what we visually see uh, when we're looking at old houses uh, in Nicosia. Uh, we have that old, uh, not finished uh, building, and we can see the, also the can. Uh, the logo of Kian, also the cow of Kian, uh, yellow and red, uh, yellow and red. And on the back, we can not see also Coca-Cola uh, without, again, by that repetition uh, act that when you just see uh, red and white, some red things, we can understand uh, that uh, Coca-Cola, we can see Geo also uh, on, on, on the bottom left. And, and the other thing I'm, I, I, I want to concentrate, it's on the cafe uh, object that we find. That meaning uh, the chair, the donut chair, uh, the tray, and everything else we see in that image represents what's a cafe uh, a coffee shop uh, in Cyprus. And before I talk about styles, different styles we can use uh, for object communication, uh, I, I gather uh, a photograph on the bottom from uh, Nicolas Costandino that has all the elements, the classic elements uh, that we can find in a cafe -ness. Again, the donut chair, the old man, because only men go to Cafe Ness. Uh, we have the tray, uh, the water, that always accompany uh, the coffee. Uh, if we send the illustration on the right, uh, by Spurs Dimitriadis, it's the same elements, uh, it's flat for round, now with color in different style. Uh, on top, uh, it's Lar Alphas here, uh, with uh, two men playing a uh, tavli. Uh, we can see, again, the Torenes chair. On top, this is a spot, uh, it's a different chair, but again, part of our visual uh, culture, that plastic uh, chair. So we can create 
locality and create Cypriot, let's say, uh, images, but just by using things that are uh, that are, are repetitive to, to us and uh, they feel close uh, uh, to the Cypriot culture. And on, on the left, there is a total different image uh, by Anna Miltiadis, brain factor, uh, that goes uh, the opposite side of the patriarchy that's in the Ekaterness, just women and drinking coffee around a table, uh, modern look, uh, heat colors, uh, cold coffee, not hot coffee, and everything else that, and, and every other message that accompanies uh, that uh, image. Uh, so um, that's like a part one, and now have a part two of the presentation. And I'm going to talk a little bit about aims of visual communication just by showing examples of uh, visual communication, mainly graphic design uh, deliverables. And so the main aim of visual communication is to uh, pass a message, uh, maybe to inform, identify, maybe explain, guide, intrigue, create a mood, or organize uh, things around us. Like every visual cues you get uh, from here, uh, to the signs, uh, to the cross we said before, to the yellow, uh, sign on the back, every cross, every sign here has a meaning. Uh, uh, the navigation signs we see, uh, the leaflets, the stickers they gave you, everything has uh, a meaning and a message that you want to uh, pass out. Uh, so this is a poster by Philippos. Uh, it's one of the first he did for Fengaros, a, a music festival happening uh, in Cyprus every summer. I think now they're in the 10th, 11th. Uh, edition. It's a great series uh, visually to see. I, uh, I, I'm just putting one uh, here. And there is also that in, in all 11 and 10 uh, posters, there is the moon, uh, that circle in always, so you can try and find it on in different uh, posters. Uh, I put this around this genome by Rock the Dog. Uh, again, about uh, a festival uh, in in Pyrgos, uh, I think, and he's using the tent as an uh, illustration uh, for the uh, Andiskino uh, festival. Again, by Philippos, the Jazz Festival uh, in, in the old port in Limassol. Uh, and he's using the logo he did for them uh, because it's in the port. We have the anchor, we have the, the musical instrument uh, in jazz together, also the J uh, from jazz. So all these. Uh, from the logo, they went uh, visually to accompany uh, the other information hierarchy uh, in uh, in the poster. Uh, this is from Angelos Panagiris uh, against uh, gender-based violence, and, and took the fire extinguisher uh, from an incident that happened uh, at the park. So there are some uh, cues happening also uh, from uh, what's happening now, uh, what's happening around us, and taking that uh, uh, things to create uh, our visual uh, communication. Uh, this one by Christian Olimbiu, uh, I, I create a, a mood uh, uh, with the soldier, playing also with type, uh, the, 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 the type of there, the soldier, and, uh, the, and, and the, the tear uh, from, the, from the soldier. This is from Nicolas Ioannou, a log about the street uh, food yard. See, this is more funky uh, uh, use of uh, typography and how these colors can be used also on, uh, on post. Also, have a log and how it can be adapted on different uh, media. Uh, this uh, by Adonis uh, and how that element can be uh, continually uh, repeated, uh, so create an awareness uh, of the uh, festival. Uh, this is a package, also on package you have uh, visual communication because they have, they're, they're trying to inform us about something. So this is about uh, six eggs in a pack. So I, I, I'm knowing I'm buying six eggs uh, in that pack. And I have that uh, more uh, uh, modern illustration in the supermarket. You can also get this one. Uh, it's like a picture of a, of a hen on the, on the neck. Uh, you can also get this one uh, from the barn. So the barn always, uh, uh, it's linked to more healthy, healthy foods. So if I use maybe the barn, uh, my eggs will be healthier and nicer. That's the idea behind it. 
And my, my favorite is this one uh, from Ashkaz. Uh, yeah, it's in the supermarket. It's from me yesterday. I took that yesterday, that photograph, yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's creepy. This one is creepy. I don't know why they're using that. Uh, yeah, it's two children in the hand trying to pick, but it's very wrong, kind of, this use of, and, and, and if you look closely, they're, they're using all this clone stamp thing, Photoshop thing, I don't know why, to repeat something, I don't know. Yeah, it's very weird. Yeah, it was dirty maybe, but I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was the grandchildren. Maybe, and, and that is quite, yeah, there is a connection for them, but not for, for the audience. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, from that, we'll go to Caristios and the uh, branding he did for hair and soap. Uh, uh, yeah, soaps for hair and body, uh, the snow daggy, and we also see the use of uh, color and the photographing of the actual product that is part uh, of creating uh, a branding, how to brand uh, my product. It's not just Finish the product is how I communicate the product, how I photograph, and how I sell that product uh, to the audience. So nice photography, good photography, always help that. And we also start with the, with this uh, photograph uh, before. Uh, this example of Ermina Manuel, a good illustration. Uh, he did for she did for a beauty line how that could be adapted on a tote bag or uh, on a T-shirt. Uh, again, a logo for Birth Life Cyprus and a publication for Birth Life Cyprus. The logo is from Despina Canau. Uh, the booklet is from is from Mira Gonari. But the booklet it's a Birth Watch uh, book, so it will guide me uh, in the in the forest to find uh, the birds, uh, and it will uh, I can identify uh, the birds. It will inform me the logo. I want to be uh, I, I want to identify the brand with the logo, so that's the main purpose of it so to be identified. So I know that's bird life, and I know how to use uh, the uh, the guide. Uh, this is a logo from Negative Design Studio in Larnaca uh, for a coffee shop keepers. Uh, they explain it to us. This is from their website. So they're using this hand gesture we talked before that everything is okay. And they also added that hidden K monogram from the keepers inside uh, the hand. That's a nice uh, second touch, a sublime uh, message. You can see, if you don't see it, it's okay, but it's there for uh, a second uh, reading because in visual communication, you have a first reading, you have a second reading, and then if we uh, slow down everything, then we're gonna find more uh, uh, meanings uh, inside uh, a story. Okay. I'm gonna be very quick with this because uh, on the, the first one, it's a rebranding of the Cyprus tourism logo. So we went from the Aphrodite sun and the sea to a plain uh, dull uh, heart and this huge play of the overlapping shapes. That was, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not gonna critique many of that, but you can understand my posture that I don't like it very much. And on, on, on the bottom, we have the, on the left, we have the rebranding that our, our state uh, TV did. And on the right, we see the Norway state TV logo. I was that before. So you can see the echoes of the circles and the lettering. We can see some similarities. I don't know. Uh, now, uh, this is a street sign uh, for, for Palaundas Giros, uh, a kebab. Uh, place in, in Cyprus. It's an old one, but I, I, I love how they use the aluminum thing as a, as, as, as a skewer for the euros <laughs> to place the, 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 the sign uh, exactly where the skewer is. So that's a perfect play, but with a badly uh, clip art thing. So that's bad, but the, 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 the placement, it's very clever on how they put it on, 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 on the window. There. <laughs> Uh, these are some um, billboards from Cyprus and some happy accidents. So we have politicians and junk food together playing uh, and looping. You can see that, yeah. And on, on the bottom, uh, this one stuck, was stuck on whiskey and Averov. <laughs> if it was stuck on whiskey and Anastasia, it would be better. But okay, you can see the reference and the connection uh, with that, but it, it was stuck like that. 
yeah, it wasn't like the first one, otherwise uh, I took a video of it. Uh, yeah, I'll go back to both. No, I think this is the bus routes of Nicosia. Uh, you can find that online you could, for, to, uh, to inform you where, where, the bus, where the bus stops are and how to navigate uh, your way around uh, Nicosia. Uh, in the same uh, lines of uh, signage wayfinding, this by TCL with Robulos, I think it's for PWC uh, building and uh, the, the signage uh, he did. Uh, this is from Mira Gonari and the signage and graphics and branding he did for the Cyprus Poster Triennial uh, last year. And we see uh, uh, the language, how it transports from the wall to the windows, to the poster, to the, uh, to the catalog of, of the exhibition. This is from Poppy uh, for an exhibition, for a, a, to guide us in an exhibition uh, about, what was it, Poppy, what is it? Yeah, about galleries in Nicosia from 1960 to 1974. Uh, this is from uh, the logo he did for the Azines uh, initiative, that it's an open library, that gathering uh, zines, uh, uh, small run publications that are, uh, um, are, are done very quickly. So I have this expressive typography also with these like fires coming out of it. And it's connected very uh, nicely with the name uh, Azines that were on were were were, were, were having uh, very quick things. So this was a very nice uh, uh, way of creating uh, a logo. And the last one, I'm um, going back to 1937. It's a cover of a book uh, from Defcos and Theas, uh, Exodus. Uh, the illustration is from and the types from uh, from Diamandis. And I, I'm putting this last one. Uh, as an appreciation of what's happening before and what there, what, what there is out there. So if we try and keep looking around in archives and all things, we can find some uh, very great examples of uh, visual communication uh, out there. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I think I'm done, yeah. Thank you. Hello everyone. Uh, thank you for coming today. Thank you to Science and the people here for inviting us. Uh, my name is uh, Philippos Vasiliadis. I am a graphic designer. I studied graphic and advertising uh, at Frederick University for four years. Then I went to London to do my MA in graphic design. I came back in 2006 and I started working in advertising agencies for uh, almost five years. And since uh, 2010, I am a freelancer. Um, today, my presentation is going to be about uh, branding. Uh, what is branding? Um, why we use it? And what's the process of, uh, of branding, mainly on the design aspect, because there is huge uh, branding is, has so many things inside that I cannot cover. So I'm a specialist in design, so I'm gonna talk mostly about that part. Uh, so branding, first a little bit of uh, history. Branding as a word was, invent was originated from uh, a, Scandina a Scandinavian uh, word, brander, <laughs> Only has called me when I sent him the presentation. He told me, "Are you sure that's uh, that's the correct word?" There's an hour, there's an hour in the end. <laughs> I told him that's the that's the Scandinavian word. So it originated from that word, and it means to burn because uh, Vikings were burning their cattle with uh, hot iron just to identify uh, who owned the cattle. It's a bit of a gruesome uh, origin. I didn't know that. I just learned it recently. And then came the Industrial Revolution. Uh, in the Industrial Revolution, um, humanity um, um, discovered machinery. So uh, with machinery came mass production. With mass production came a lot of companies offering their products. So um, with all these new companies and their products came the need for branding. This is the first uh, registered trademark. I think the year it was registered is um, 
1876, and it's a, it's a brewery, and it was the first ever um, trademark, registered trademark by law. I think the law on, uh, on trademarks was voted in England in 1875. So this was the first, uh, the first trademark logo. There were a lot of logos before this, but uh, there was no legislation on trademarks, so it was the first uh, registered. I think uh, Coke is another company. Um, some some gun companies like Smith and Wetson in America were with the, they had their logos, but they were not uh, registered as trademarks. So, what is a brand? A brand is a type of product or service manufactured or offered by a company under a particular name, and uh, often both products and services. Branding. Branding refers to all the actions taken to position your brand and is divided into two major categories. We have the marketing aspect of branding and the design aspect. There is a lot of uh, there is a lot more subcategories, but uh, these are the two main uh, the main categories. Um, you need both to create a successful branding, and uh, each one has specific processes to do that. Um, the marketing branding uh, area is the area that uh, people dealing with it will do the research. We uh, will we'll tell you what your company needs, how to promote it, and then the graphic design uh, part of branding is uh, how to take all those information from the marketing team and uh, implement it into products or services. So in order to have a successful branding uh, for your company, you need four elements. First of all, you have to find your target audience. Uh, second, you have to position your business. Third, you have to define your company's personality. And the fourth and last uh, step is to choose a logo and slogan. The first, uh, the first three um, parts is, is usually done by the marketing team. And then they go to the designers and they start working to implement those, uh, those elements. Here's an example of Denon. Denon is a, I think it's a Japanese company started by an American. It's, it, it's mainly dealing with uh, audio equipment. And it's, I think it's more than a hundred years old and it's now bought by another huge company in, uh, in America. So now it's an American company. Um, the three parts here is, is the ones I was talking before. First one is find your target audience because it's, um, it's an audiophile company and usually um, people that deal with uh, audio, it's usually males, 35 to 55 years old. They have a little bit of extra cash, so they want to invest on, uh, on audio equipment. So that's your target audience. The second one is the, um, is the positioning of your company. It's uh, the products of Denon are mid-range to high-end audio systems. I would say a little bit more to the high-end part. And uh, the characteristics of the company, it's, uh, it's, I think it has always been minimal design, high quality products, and it used to be handcrafted and hand tuned. So it's a very established uh, name in the, in the world of audio equipment. I have a special emotional connection with Denon because my father had a, a Denon and I, was, I, I listened my first cassette on a Denon. This is a product, very, very high-end products, usually um, very technological advanced products, high-end photography, high-end promotion, and of course, high prices. So we're going to talk about brand identity now. In order to give, uh, to have a successful outcome from your branding, you have to have a brief. 
the brief is the is the structure that the designer will get from the client uh, that will help him go through the company and understand what are the deliver deliverables, what is the um, uh, what is the essence of the company, what is the budget, what is the schedule, and all these things. So a brief um, includes this information. Firstly, a small paragraph about the company, which which shows which shows the, the with the designer the the core. Uh, characteristics of the company. Then there is the info about the project. Um, if they have a specific product they want to promote, uh, you will have extensive information on the product. Then is the target audience that the product will be, the product or service will be targeted to. The budget, very important. The deliverables uh, and the schedule and the deadlines. This is the, the basic structure of the brief. We're going to see this later in the workshop when we, we will work on an on a, um, imaginary company and we work together to, to create a brief. The best thing to do, and I always tell to my clients when the, they brief me for a project, is um, apart from all these things, if they can give me a mood board to work, it's very helpful and uh, it saves both of us a lot of time because I know exactly after all the information from the brief where to target my um, my design. So a mood board is very important. Um, the mood board includes uh, it doesn't have to include examples of graphic design that are, that are directly related to a product. It could be uh, color palettes that the client likes. It could be photography. Uh, it could be many things that he like just to get a feeling for the from the client to know what things he likes and uh, to move into a more specific direction with him. So a mood board is very important when you are doing a brief. And then the next step uh, is to choose your designer wisely, because when I have a specific product. There is a specific designer that will do the, the job for me. I mean, we all have uh, portfolios. Uh, we all have different styles. We don't do anything and everything. So the client has to find a specific designer based on his portfolio to choose and uh, collaborate he, with him on the project. Um, the best thing to do this now is through the database in uh, in. Um, a uh, website where you can find portfolios of, uh, of designers or Instagram if you can uh, search and see their work before you contact them. So choosing a designer is very important because a lot of times people come to me and they ask for a specific thing and I tell them I am not the, um, I'm not the proper designer for this we are asking because I don't do this kind of thing. So it's it's good to have a direction on the designer's work because before you start working with them. And then when you find your designer, you have to find common ground. Uh, what I do when I have a new client is I sit and discuss with them sometimes for a long time about the project. So when I leave the table, I know that I am in a, in a good place and we've talked about the project in an extent, so I know that I'm, I'm going to be confident to go and start working, and there's not going to be a lot of back and forth with the client because there was misunderstandings from the beginning. The first thing you work on a project, and the most important thing for me, uh, is the logo. The logo of a company is going to be everywhere, everywhere, in social media, on your products, um, on your letterhead, on your cards, everywhere. It's the single most important thing for your company. And uh, for me, it's one of the most difficult things to design because in a simple icon, you have to, or typography, you have to uh, implement all the concepts of the company. So it's the most important thing uh, for branding. The famous designer uh, Paul Rand said, a logo doesn't sell directly, it identifies. 
because the most important thing in branding is uh, consistency. And as I said before, repetition. Um, when you see a theme so many times, then it's embedded in your brain. And because logos are usually simple images, it's much easier to, to remember them and identify something with them. These are some famous uh, logos that I think the ideas behind them are brilliant. Uh, first, the Amazon logo. We have everything from A to Z, and there's a little smile also. I don't like visually that logo, but I find the, the idea is brilliant. Next one is the Nike logo, which is one of the most successful brands ever. I mean, when you just see that without anything else, you know it's a, uh, it's a Nike. Um, the, Apple, the Apple logo has, I was trying to find a specific uh, meaning for, for it, but I found three or different four explanations. Some people uh, say it was from Adam and Eve. Some people said um, there is a byte missing because the byte of the measurement unit of the computer. Um, some people say the apple represents a, a Newton uh, law, with one Newton is uh, equal to an apple. I couldn't find a, a specific explanation for it. Uh, FedEx with the hidden uh, arrow pointing uh, forward. Baskin Robbins with the 31 uh, number in the logo for the 31 flavors of the brand. And uh, Beats uh, by Dr. Dre, which is a head with the, the headphones and the letter B. I think these as logos as, are brilliant. The second thing is the slogan. Second most important thing is the slogan. Um, because after the, after the creation of the logo, you have to communicate your brand with something that is catchy and it will stay and it will stick. So these are the, some of the most uh, successful slogans of all time. Just do it by Nike, uh, impossible is nothing, just different by Apple, and let's go places by um, Toyota. I remember when I was studying in England, uh, the advertisements of Tesco, which is a, it's a mid to low, low range uh, supermarket. The, uh, the slogan was uh, every little helps. And every time I was, I was watching an advertisement, at the end they had an offer or something and they were saying this, uh, they were saying this slogan at the end and it was the, the, the single most thing that stuck in my head. And I still remember it today after almost 20 years. So slogans are very important. And usually slogans are, are, are important when you, uh, not when you see them, but when you hear them, because usually you might not be watching TV and just listening to it. And when you listen to the slogan at the end, you know, you know it's, uh, you, you link it to a specific brand. <laughs> I was trying to, to think of uh, a slogan in Cyprus that stuck in my head. <laughs> and the first thing that came in my head was this. I don't know how to say this in English, though. I don't know if it's translated in English. Uh, it says, if you want uh, quality materials for your house, the only place there? Dowry, the yeah. Charm. With charm, there's the only place to get it is from uh, the Padari shop. This was embedded so much in our, uh, in our childhood. I remember listening to this, like... <laughs> I remember listening to it like 10 times a day from the radio when I was uh, a little boy. It's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it stuck to my head like a nightmare. So the third thing is color. Color also plays a tremendous role in, uh, in branding. Uh, I don't think that it's uh, someone here that doesn't know what, the, what this is. I can strip all the information out of the can, but I still know it's a, it's a Coke. So color is very important for brands. And along with the logo and the slogan, it, it creates recognition through repetition and, and, and you learn to recognize a brand through so simple things such as color. Basically, um, 
the usually the brand managers of companies have two two color palettes. There is a primary palette which is uh, often taken directly from the from the colors of the logo, and there is a secondary palette which is a palette that you use on your communication. Uh, it doesn't have to be everywhere. It's, it's just a secondary palette that it, it um, uh, accompanies the, the primary palette when it's necessary. The fourth, the fourth most important thing is fonts. Uh, you have the logo, you have the slogan, you have the palette, and the last thing you will need is the fonts that are identified with your brand. Uh, again, usually brands have a primary font. Uh, and a secondary font. Uh, or sometimes nowadays, because of technology, there is another third font that is used for uh, digital websites and social media and stuff like that. Again, brands are, are recognized by their uh, fonts, like Apple, for example, they were using um, Baskerville for a long time, and sorry for, I think for many years. So even, I, even if the logo was missing, I knew that slogan was from Apple, just because of the font. So when you have these four things, uh, you have the, the basic uh, structure of your brand identity. Um, and then you start building your promotional materials and your stationery and, uh, and your brand manual, which we're gonna see later. Uh, usually the first things you do with your company is to create uh, the business card, the letterhead, uh, the envelopes, um, and uh, I think compliment slips are nowadays uh, <laughs> um, not used. I still do them sometimes, but they're not used. Uh, so this is the basic, the first thing usually when you do when you're doing the branding, the first thing is the stationery. And the most important thing is to have consistency again throughout. Uh, the placement of your logo has to be the same. The colors have to be the same. The fonts, all the things we said before have to be consistent throughout the branding just to have, just to start building recognition for your company. Uh, and nowadays, of course, then uh, the next thing is uh, building a website because you, you cannot do anything without a digital presence anymore. And of course, social media. Uh, 15 years ago, when I started working in the agencies, these two were not even in the, in the spectrum of, uh, of branding. Some people were asking for websites, but the most important things for them at the time was uh, um, stationery and uh, printed advertisement. Now I think, nowadays I think, this is the most important part, social media and websites. And you start implementing, when you do these basic things, you, can, you start implementing your logo on other materials like signs, um, billboards, posters, and uh, promotional materials like tote bags or uh, notebooks and stuff like that. Again, these things will help your company go um, because you, you start structuring your, uh, the elements that you got, you're gonna start implementing them in different, in different areas. So again, it's recognition and recognition until you establish your name. So now we're going to see um, a basic structure of a brand manual. A brand manual is like the, um, uh, the encyclopedia of a company to see everything to do about with the, uh, with the brand. Uh, you've got the fonts, the logo, the usage, the do's and don'ts, the applications on uh, advertising, uh, digital media, and all that stuff in a publication. So the designer that gets this brand manual knows exactly what to do with the logo and exactly what the company is about. Uh, this is the, um, the brand manual of Slack. It's a very well-known company and you can find this and download it online if you want. It's an extensive uh, uh, brand manual. I think it's about 90 pages uh, long, it's, it's huge. So the first thing you do 
when you're reading a bond manual, it's explain, like I said in the beginning, uh, who you are, what's your company. Um, then based on the marketing research, the, the marketing team research, uh, you have to uh, find a solution, find um, uh, the reason why your product or service is needed. So uh, what was the challenge, what was the solution, and what was the result? These are the brand values. Again, this, if you're sending a brief to a new designer to know your company, you're going to include all this information on the brief. The brand values, the core, um, and, um, and the personality of your company, just to, just to guide them through what your company is all about. And then you start, uh, the brand manual usually explains to you how, how, what is the logo, what, how it was created, what are its basic shapes, how it can be used, uh, usually in monochrome and uh, colorful versions, the minimum size that it can be used, the maximum size, um, same for the icon, how it can be used on photography, on color, again, the different uh, black and white versions of the logo. And uh, very important also is what not to do with the logo. I had many, many times working with people who were distorting uh, the logos and changing color. You cannot do that. Changing fonts and stuff like that. The core palettes of a company, this is the primary colors. Usually, I, usually most companies have two or three colors. This is, uh, they have a lot of colors because of the logo, because the logo is colorful. The secondary palette, which is again a lot. The typography I was talking about before. Primary, secondary. And then you explain, uh, the brand the, the manual explains um, what font are you using for titles, what font are you using for text, um, and uh, where to put bold, uh, scene, or stuff like that, everything that has to do with, uh, with the text. Then you can fill up the photography of your uh, company. Many companies do that because when you're working with a brand manual, yeah, sometimes you have to go in an image bank and find, uh, find photos for advertisements. So they give you guidelines where to, what kind of photography to, to look for, what kind of palettes, uh, uh, what kind of concepts the photography should have for the, for the advertisement. That's why the, um, the mood board with the photography is done. Again, many companies do a lot of, um, um, customizing their own icons so they have consistency with other, throughout their communication. Uh, this, is, this is usually done for larger uh, companies, not for small companies. I mean, if you have a company like uh, uh, MasterCard or IGN or British Airways, their manuals might be 300 pages uh, long. It's, it's huge the information, those manuals. You don't need, the, the basic things you need for a small company is uh, the usage of the logo, the color palettes, the fonts, uh, and how to use the, the logo in small and big sizes and versions. You don't need anything else. If you, if you have the need to, to, to develop your company even more, then you slowly start adding stuff to the, to the brand manual, like uh, advertisements, uh, uh, billboards, and stuff like that. That's it. Thank you. Thank you.